opportunity we have to fellowship together around your word. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are the teacher making known the mysteries of the gospel. And I now submit myself to you that you think with my mind and that you speak with my mouth. And it's just amazing how powerful you are, God, that you can take one word and, and fix and meet all of our individual situations. And I just pray right now in Jesus' name that you, oh God, that you, oh God, that only you, oh God, minister to our hearts and you minister to our homes and you, you take us from where we are to the place that you want us to be. And I just declare right now that this is a victorious gathering of believers and Satan, you are absolutely defeated in every single area of our lives. Will you lose in our families? Will you lose in our parenting? You lose on our jobs? You can't touch our money. You can't touch our bodies. And we evict you from our minds right now. And our emotions in Jesus name we are strong say I'm strong say I'm courageous say we are victorious in the name of Jesus and we declare father that there are people here today that need a life-giving relationship with Jesus they'll be free to choose him but then there are people that have been searching Atlanta looking for a life-giving church nothing will stop them from connecting and making this church their home today in the name of Jesus all of God's people say amen Come on, let's make our faith confession for the word. And after that, you may be seated. Let's do it with your Bibles in your hand. Let's go. The applied word of God will change my life instantly. I'm both a hearer and a doer of the word. Therefore, I walk by faith, not by sight. I will possess my promises. I will pursue with passion. I will prosper as my soul. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Let me get into this word before I won't end up preaching today. Hallelujah. Uh, to all of our guests, thank you so much uh, for being here. Um, if, if a friend brought you here, we teach harassment 101. Um, so um, I just want you to know that at work, those of you that are here by way of the mailers, if you have one of those uh, from this week, you can take that mailer to the information desk up front and they'll take your uh, email address and get you a copy of the relationship book that we said that we would do for you. Um, I want to start this new series called uh, All Star Kids, All Star Kids, say All Star Kids. I want us to be honest out of the gate if you can just admit every parent want their chi wants their children or child to be successful if you don't we're gonna be praying for you after service um, I grew up where parents can't tried to showcase their children so if you knew the books of the Bible there would be a gathering and then your grandma would be like, show them, just do it. Genesis, Exodus, Vicky, Number, Deuteronomy. I'm like, that was good, ain't it? That was good. Um, every parent is proud that, that, you know, when your child is a star athlete. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all just like. No, your children don't walk around saying, I made the president's list. You'd be like, yeah, man, you know Lil Bonquisha made the president's list this year. <laughs> I think we just need to be honest. There's something in us that we want our kids to shine. And wherever they're strong, we encourage that strength. But I also think that there are some things that we do that are a hindrance to our children. And I think this, I think this, I think this, Jerome, being, being a former principal and those of you that are in education, I, I think one of the greatest things we can do is overlook our children's deficits. One of my daughters is in the sanctuary. She's great at this and that and this and that. And she's like her mom and this and that. She's like her dad and this and that. But she's also like her mom and this and that. She's also like her dad and this and that. And some of that stuff is not so great that we're trying to work on. Why do you think that your children should be totally different than what you were and are? And I think the more that we overlook things, because we start out lying for them early. She's sleepy. No, she's not. 
she acting just like you and your mama and your... She's not sleeping. He, he's, he's hungry. That boy not hungry. He mean. Yeah, you can't talk about kids. Well, why can't you? Like, I mean, did we just... No. And I think that we overlook... The, y'all don't want to talk to me. We, I, we overlook stuff, and we overlook stuff, and we don't deal with it as a toddler, and we don't deal with it at eight and nine, and then we don't deal with it as a preteen, and then we don't deal with it. And then you, you got this teenager that you can't do nothing with. And then, Oh, next week I'm teaching, I'm teaching ten things every child should know by the age of 18. Ten things every child should know by the age. If you don't have yourself here to make sure your child knows this stuff by the age of 18, I don't really believe you're concerned about their success. But back to the lesson at hand. Perfection is perfected. I'm going to let them understand. Somebody. Listen, here's the thing right here. Here's the thing right here. If you don't do it, check this out. Now they're going to be an adult and they're going to be somebody else's problem. And what you don't correct now, society and the law will. And we're not helping our children. We want them to be all-stars, but those of you that play sports or take your children to sports, they practice a lot. Some of y'all don't have no life because y'all always run into practices. They practice and practice and practice. How do you think your child is going to be an all-star in this world, but they don't practice? So, scripture I have right here is, 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 is tough. I'm, I'm doing the, the New International Version. I'm going to do the NIV Version. Let's look up on the screen here and, and let's look at the, at the scriptures that we have for today. For some reason, I do not have the book, but I have the scripture number. So, it's six. So, find the scripture in the Bible with a six. You see that? Go back, go back, go back. Let's laugh together. Look at that. The New International Version 6. Go to the verses. So, and here we are. So, I need you to go through every book of the Bible, every chapter, and find us. I believe it's Exodus 6 and 1. I believe it's Exodus 6 and 1. I believe it's Exodus. Please let it be Exodus 6 and 1. Sounds about Exodus because these are the laws that they're about to receive as they're leaving, heading into the promised land. So, <laughs> Exodus 6 and 1. These are the commands. Come on, let's read, y'all. Decrees and laws of the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land you are crossing uh -huh, the Jordan to possess. All right, Pastor Campbell, let's read together. Let's go. So that you... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, uh -huh. So they may they enjoy long life. Here's verse number three. Let's go. Here's, here's verse number four, and we're finished. Saying, listen, I want you to do some things. There's four movements. There's four movements. Say all-star kids. All right. There's four movements that we're going to have in these scriptures that I'll show you. But out of these scriptures, let's look at three simple things. Say simple things. Number one, number one, number one, number one. Put that up there. You need God's help to raise your child or children. How many can say amen to that? Amen. Okay, point number two. Point number two, put that up there, put it up there. You need God's help to raise your child. Okay, point number three. Put, put number three there, there. You need God's help. Okay, three simple things to do. Three simple things to do. Three simple things to do. Let's look at this. Number three. Teach, number one, teach your child children. God is the answer to life's challenges and success. You have to teach your children. Who's the answer? God is the answer. God is the answer. Number two, number two, number two, teach your child. Can, can I just not say child, children every time and just say child? I don't know if you got more than one. We're talking about all of them. Okay, okay. Teach your child God, uh-oh, is not an option but a necessity. 
Okay, three parents, three parents, three parents. Okay, let's get seven. Let's get seven parents. Number four, number three, number three. Do everything you can to foster a viable, God-centered relationship for your child to admire. Ooh. No, no, you have to do everything that you can that you foster an environment that, that, that your children basically can look to you and admire your relationship with God. One of the things that I do is, is I've learned a balance in pastoring and parenting. So I do my pastoring stuff while my children are not home, and then I do my parenting stuff when they are home. But my daughter, so I, I, I was one that, you know, would study late, and, you know, they would come into the office, and i tell them in a minute, in a minute. But now I don't do that anymore. When they want to play Barbie dolls, I miss playing Barbie dolls. They don't really want to play no more. But anyway, that's just something internal that God is working with me on. But um, I, I, I stopped, you know, yesterday. Mia was like, hey, what's up? What you want to do? I was like, it's a little cold outside, but I will take you outside and bust you up because I think now is to play basketball. So I'm always doing these things. But Madison came to me one day, and she says, hey. I said, what's up? She goes, you don't really read the Bible. I said, no, yes, I do. I said, Daddy reads the Bible all the time. She says, I see when you preach, you, you talk about the Bible, but I don't see you read it at home. I was like, well, babe, because I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to explain because that's our time. Not, but you know what I do intentionally now? Oh, I got the Bible on the coffee table at all times. Y'all, y'all missing my point. You ain't got to prove nothing to her. She a child. Do it. No, 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 no. She's looking like my dad's a pastor and I don't see him reading the Bible. You need to see me reading it. You don't just need to know I'm doing it. Okay. Say live it. Verse number five. Verse number five. This is our four movements. Say live it. It says love the Lord your God with all your heart. He says, and, and, and with all your soul and with all your strength, these are the commandments I've given you today to, to be where? where? Where are the commandments to be? In, in your heart. He says, I want you to love the Lord God with all your heart. I, I, I want you to love it because here's the thing. When they were in, in Egypt, they followed the law of the land. Say the law of the land. He's introducing them now to obedience because of love and not legalism. He said, when you do this, when you come out of Egypt, you're about to go into this prosperous place. I don't want you to do it legalistically. I want you to obey me because it's in your heart to do it. And this was the problem with Jesus and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and Sadducees and so Sadducees. They were always talking about the legalistic part, and he's talking about a love relationship. So they were stuck on the law, and he's saying, I'm trying to progress people to not do this because it's the letter of the law. I want you to do this because your heart is so given to me that you don't obey me because you got to do it. You obey me because you want to do it. Okay, 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 okay. Say live it. Then he says, I want you to teach it, teach it. Verse number seven, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on their foreheads. Write them down on the door frame of the houses and your gates. And when the Lord God brings you into the land that he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land, large, flourishing cities you did not build, you didn't see. This is the thing. You can't take credit for the stuff you have because some of the stuff you have you're not even responsible for it. Houses filled with all kinds of goods, uh, good things you did not provide. Say, I did not provide. Uh, yeah, filled with all kinds of things that you didn't provide. Wells you didn't dig and vineyards of olive groves and you did not plant. And then when you eat, you are satisfied. But here's what we need to do. We need to teach it. We need to teach it, but we need to protect it. Protect it. Say protect it. Verse number 12, I love this. It says... Be careful. Read those first two words. Come on, read it with some power. Read it like you're talking to your child that's about to get the other side of you that they ain't really seen and they don't want to deal with. Or, 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 or do it based on a person that's trying to cross you on social media and you like, like I love Jesus and all. But, but, come on, class, go. Be, be careful that you don't forget. 
See, here's the problem. So some of us forgot. Some of us are. So don't, don't forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. What do you mean by that? In, 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 in Egypt or in the wilderness per se, th- th- there was a daily provision. And so when, when, when I've watched this, when people are in lack, they're more faithful to God. When people are broke, busted, and disgusted, they'll pray, they'll show up, they'll serve. But as soon as you get your promotion, as soon as you get a few degrees, as soon as you move behind the gate, as soon as you can actually get a car that don't smoke no more, you ain't got to pray over, you just push your little button and you ain't even got to park no more. You just sit there and it just back you in and all of that kind of stuff. As soon as you can do for your children what your mama couldn't do for you, as soon as you can take a trip and put it on Facebook we out here doing this when your mama couldn't take you to Six Flags as soon as you can get off government assistance as soon as you can make Six Flags y'all ain't got to say nothing as soon as you can buy what you want to buy and go where you want to go as soon as you can throw away more than your mama and them can raise you on my father-in-law told me something he says you know what son poor people don't have trash They have to consume everything. He, 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 he taught me a lesson standing at the trash can one day. When we built our first home, he said, son, y'all so blessed. So why do you say that? He said, look at all this trash. I said, what are you talking about, man? He said, son, poor people don't have trash. And I gladly took that trash to the road, praising God. Thank you, God, that we got stuff to throw away. That, you know what? When we lived off leftovers, now we choose if we want to. Thank, thank, thank. Thank you, God, that, 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 that I'm not forced to shop at Goodwill. I go there if I want to. Thank you, God, that, 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 that I'm able to give to good. Thank, thank, no, you got to understand. He said, don't forget. Be careful. And it's hard to center people in when they feel like, check this out. We don't, I'm, I'm going to go over my time. I'm going to already tell you because I feel what, we, we, see, it's hard to center people when you feel like you don't need God no more. You know why? Because church has made God your come up. You give so he can bless you. You do this so he can help you. What about doing it because you love him? What about if he don't give you the money? You're just faithful. What about if he don't give you the car? You're just holy and you worship him. Because grandmama said, I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but the Lord saw fit. Somebody say, be careful. You have to protect this thing. That you don't forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Here's another thing, be careful. Here's another thing, be careful. Here's another thing, be careful. Be careful that you don't forget that he still remembers who you was. There, there, There comes a point, there comes a point, there comes a point where you need to be transparent with your children. That there comes a point. You know, like Mia now, she's asking a lot of questions, and I'm like, Jesus. Dad, you ever drink communion? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't specify, yes, I drank a lot of communion, yes. Every time, I rem- do it in remembrance of him, yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Dad, you have a curse? Cursive? I don't write well in cursive. I, uh... We try to put this perfect thing across. And if we can teach our children, listen, at a certain time and an appropriate age, I haven't always done the right thing. Baby, you see me in the promised land. I'm originally from Egypt. He says, I want you to live it. I want you to protect it. I want you to I want you to learn it. I want you to I want you to learn it. I want you to live it. I want you to teach it. I want you to protect it. I want you to learn it. I want you to live it. I want you to teach it. I want you to protect it. Here's the question. Will you teach your child to depend on God? Will you, will you teach your child 
to depend on God? Will you teach your child to depend on God? N now you're in the promised land and it's opulent and it's plentiful and it's prosperous. Will you teach your child to depend on God? We saw the video from Haiti and uh, I'm grateful I had the opportunity to take my children because they were able to see that they live like kings and queens compared to people that don't have running water, that don't have clothes. And, 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 and it was a humbling experience as we were walking up, to, up the mountain, glad that he had uh, undergarments on. He was a man, but he had ladies' undergarments on. And he was outside taking a bath. Like, we walking up the mountain. He's right there washing up with some water from down the mountain. So, and, she, my, and I saw my daughter's like, are you kidding me? And I'm like, yes. And you complaining that we tell you to take a bath. It's her turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. I took mine first last week. But that last week, you ain't going to bathe today. Like, why don't we want to bathe? Is that same anointing in your home? And why is it so quick? Y'all ain't never done the smell test. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Lift your arm up. Get yourself back in that so, and they confused, but you tell me not to stay in there long. <laughs> God desires, God desires that we live life a certain way. God desire, he, he desires that we live our lives a certain way. I want to use a baseball diamond to illustrate this. I didn't come up with this. I just put my spin on it. I think it's very good. Home plate. Say home plate. This, this is where we love God first. And this is with our faith. You, you, you come up to, pit, to hit at home plate. And this is where you connect. This is where you connect. You, you connect. You connect with God. You love God first. And this is where you win with your faith. Then, then you go to first base, which is your character, which is your character. We have to teach our children to love yourself. You, you have to love, with your, love yourself. You, you win with yourself. We had an interesting conversation with Mia last night, centered her pretty much around this topic because, you know, things change when you get to middle school and stuff like that. And you got to make sure that you love yourself because if, if you don't give your children that at an early age, listen to me, you'll be a grown little girl looking for somebody to love you. And you'll do anything within your power. It doesn't matter how they treat you. It doesn't matter what quality you have as long as you love me. It doesn't matter how, if you talk to me crazy. It don't matter if you put your hands on me. It don't matter if you're faithful to me. Just do you love me while you're with me? That's all I care about. I'm talking good, y'all. I know it's tough, but, but I, got, I got to give it to you. So then, then the, the second base, second base is, is community, community where we love others. This is where you win with other people. Can you not see how society is changing the way that God wants you to live? He, it, God is first. They, they're trying to tear that down. Love yourself. They're not telling you to love yourself. They're telling you to be into you. It's so many people that's so in love with themselves. It's like, dude, no. Love yourself. Don't lust yourself. I ain't going to say that. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. Second base. Then, then, you know, we got this whole it's just me thing. If you're going to be successful in life, you got to win with other people. That's not Christians. And skin, melon might not be like yours. That don't talk like you, look like you, think like you, act like you, eat what you eat, like what you like. You got to teach your children. If you're going to win in life, you got to love everybody. Okay. I, okay. What, what's my next base? What's my next? Third base? Third base? And then this is, this is competence. Love what you do. This is where you win with results. Let's say love what you do. Okay. Here's the challenge. Here, 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 here's, here's the challenge. Parents, he says, he says here, I want you to now. These are the commands, the decrees, the laws of God directed to me to teach you that you observe in the land as you're crossing the Jordan. So that you and your children can, can, can get these. You're supposed to have this. So you can teach it to your children. Do y'all see that? Because if the first thing we got to do, we got to learn it. It's got to be in you first before it's in them. Say in me, before in them. 
Here's the challenge. We don't have a relationship to pass down. My, my dad, my dad is, is, is in, in heaven trying to find some duct tape and a water hose to fix something. He's trying to find something broken. He, he loved to fix things. My dad is trying. I, I, I don't know, but I believe if Tupac said heaven got a ghetto, heaven got to have a fishing place. I, if I'm being heaven, I got to be able to fish. Holy, holy, holy. That's okay. My dad didn't have a whole lot of money, but my dad left me something. My, my, my dad never traveled the world, but my dad left me something. He left me what was in him. And parents, here's a challenge. We have to have the relationship to pass down. The next one is we're, we're, we're teaching our children to run life backwards. We're teaching our children, you go after success, baby. You go from home plate, really don't really consider home plate. That's just where you stand and hit the ball. But you run the third base first, which is where you, 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 you go love, win with results. We want our children to be so successful that we're overlooking home plate and we're running life backwards. We're not concerned about loving yourself. You're not concerned about other people. All you're concerned about is results, 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 results. That's why you will cheat for your children. That's why you will lie for your children because results matter. Results matter. We took a parenting class and the guy told us something so hard. He said, let your children fail. What do you mean? No, they, they, they know they got the project. They forget the project. They call you about the project, and you will leave work and almost get fired and run home. And she did that wrong, and let me glue this on here, and let me spruce this on here to make that look a little better. Let me just do it over. I'm going to do it over. And you will try to make them look so good to take them something so they can just get the result versus teaching him or her a responsibility. This is your project. This is your grade. Get your stuff together. And you might not get an A this time, but if you get a B, that's your B. You earn that B. Next time, you won't make the same mistake. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. But we're so concerned about results. By precept and example, we're making home plate last. When home plate is first. I love it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because you start out with God. And even though you hit a home run, you got to come back to God. And even in baseball, if you don't touch home plate, even though you hit the ball far, I'm preaching here, you still out. So you can have all the success, I'll do it this way. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? You can have all the success. I'm not anti-success. I'm not anti-grace. I'm not anti-vacation. I'm not anti-money. But I am pro-God. So, here's the thing. We do stuff like this. You say, Pastor, I don't do that. Yes, you do. You, you, don't, you don't have to go to church today. You, you don't have to go to church today, but you're but you going to study. See, we, we, success. You, you, you've minimized God. You, you ain't got to go to church today, baby. You, you, you tired? Okay. That, that's fine. I'm tired every day. I got to get up to go to work when that alarm go off. And I, and I got to do some stuff. You're teaching them that you don't have to do what's important because it's how you feel. Can I mess with somebody and knock on your front door? Life ain't about how you feel. It's about what you got to do. You got to get up. You got to go make the donuts. You got to put up with the devil. You got to put up with the devil's children. You got to put up with the devil's mama. You got to put up with the devil's grandmama. And you still got to smile. And you still got to praise. And you still got to glorify God. But because it ain't about how you feel. I'm really messing up. So as soon as they don't want to do it no more, come on, you ain't got to stay on the team. You're teaching them to quit. And you get mad and yank your little boy off the team because he don't get to play as much as the other little boy. If your son was good, You do know society has messed this up. When I grew up, if you wasn't no good, it don't matter if your mama paid money. You sat down. 
Not sit down, sit down. Now, all the kids got to play. He's been, Chucky's been in two minutes. Get out, Chucky. Tim, two minutes. Okay. Two, okay. Sebastian, two minutes. Okay. Chucky, Chucky, come, 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 come. Corin, two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. Everybody's played two minutes. And you happy just because they got what they got. That's not life. You don't get paid what everybody else get paid just because y'all on the same job. They had to put in work and thank God that you taught, your, your parents taught you or struggle taught you or experience taught you to work and bust it and do your job because you reap what you sow. Man, I love y'all. So we teach them churches, home plate is not important. You, you just, just, just make sure you study and get good grades, but I never encourage you to study the word. Go hard for success, but do the minimum for the Savior. You know why? Because by precept and example, that's what they see you do. That, that, that's what they see you do. They see you go and you provide, and I love men that provide. I love men. I can't stand no lazy man. That's just me. I'm sorry, but I didn't mean to tell y'all, but I can't stand a lazy dude. Like, I have no, he's like, I just don't feel like it. I'm like, ooh, ooh, what do you mean? No, man, like, we, we just do whatever you got to do, like, pick cotton or peanuts or Go to McDonald's. I, I, I never, I never down a man that works. Because to me, it's the principle of just work. I don't care if you're a physician. I don't care if you work in sanitation. You are a man and you will work. Praise the Lord. I, I give a man, if he's an intellectual and does it, fine. You just work though. But just... Trying to get us to see something here. We, they see you go so hard for success, but do your children see you go hard for Jesus? They see you jump up for your favorite team, and they see you with your arms folded in worship. They see you. Look at you, boy. Uh, 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 uh. The truth of the matter is, some of this stuff that we give ourselves credit that we don't do anymore, you're too old to be doing it anyway. But do they ever see you turn on worship music? I, 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 my children have seen me cry. They see me pray. They see me get into the presence of God. But then they're going to see me have fun. and laugh. But I'm just trying to say, people of God, it can't get in them if it's not in you. Amen. Consider these mistakes. Consider these mistakes. I'm going to move abruptly here. No, I'm quickly here. I'm consider these mistakes with your relationship with God. Don't teach your children to have a relationship with God through fear. Don't, no, scared straight is not good. Love the Lord. The fear of the Lord is a reverential fear. But don't, don't, don't try to foster a relationship based on fear. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do their relationship through you. Say through me. So here's the thing. If you have let your children have a relationship with God through you, well, what happens when you're not around? Okay. Next, nextly, through society. Don't let your children have a relationship with God through society because this relationship has God. The, the relationship that society presents now is the relationship with God as a buffet with no sneeze guard. You know that shield up top that you have to reach and duck? That's for sneezing. So the relationship with God now that society presents is just this buffet. It's just, just pick a little bit of this and... Just take a little bit of that, and we just coexist, all of us together, and just take, but, oh, it's just, it, it doesn't matter, just, you can still get that, you know, because there's a lot of untruth, there's a lot of fault, there's a lot of misconception, there's a lot of lack of theologically astuteness, and the, society is just throwing videos and YouTube, and if you don't give your children a solid foundation, they'll trust a video that a popular person, that's because it's got two million views, and they'll believe that, and that's a buffet with no sneeze guard. So, here's, 
the challenge also to there's a non-existent relationship. You, you know what I want to see? I, my goal for next year, here, here's a goal for next year. And you can start playing something so we can go home. We got to eat. I beat these people up enough for today. You know my goal for next year? One of my main goals for next year as a pastor of this church. I cannot wait until our teenagers are in worship with their hands lifted, on their knees, crying before the Father. But I know it's going to take a hard, hard work. You know why? Because in most homes, I'm the only God conscious that they see. So it's hard for me to help that work, and I only see them 14 times a year. And when they're in here, they're not engaged. They're, they're, there's, they're, there's, there's no parameter. They're, because it's, it's, you got to have this in your home. You, got, you, you want all-star kids, and, but we got to get them together. You're like, I just want you to teach them how to obey and to respect me and not talk back. Let's just, da, 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 we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. But you got to give them God. You may, say, you may say, well, Pastor, you know what? I didn't come from this church thing, and you jumping on me, man. You dogging me out. I, I'm new to this, and I joined this church because you were kind of cool. You talked my language, and I could understand, and, and I didn't grow up in church, and my daddy wasn't no preacher like your dad, and now you're making me feel down. No, 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 no. All you do is you take this information, and you start today right here. You know why? It says, Proverbs 22 and 6, listen to this. Look up here. New American Standard Bible says, train up a child in the way. Come on, y'all. He, even when he is old, what will happen? Train up a child in the way he should go. We're not even pointing them in the direction that they should go. And so they have nothing to depart from because they were never connected to it. And many of us, many of you, many of us could possibly, possibly have made the mistake because you went to so much church, you got tired of church. Church was shoved in your nose. You felt like it was forced on you. You grew up in church. You went to sleep in church. You did your homework in church. Every day was church, church, church. I'm talking to some right people. And you said when you get old, you're going to let your children decide. But what child wants Jesus? Hey, I love my, I may, no, you singing in the choir. I don't want to sing, Daddy. You're getting in the choir. Lip swole or not, you're singing. They need the preacher kids. We don't want to go to rehearsal. You're going. And not for, well, you the preacher's kids and other kids need to see you. No, no, I never put that pressure on my kids. You're going because you're in my house, and this is what Christian children do in my house. Ah, oh, I could mess up right there. It says, start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. The Amplified Version, train up a child in the way he, or should, he, or he should go, teaching him to seek God's wisdom and will for his abilities and talents. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. The message translation is point your kids in the right direction. <gasps> when they're old, how many lost people do you know? Lost trying to get a job to fulfill it. Lost trying to get a man or woman to fill it. Lost trying to get a vacation to fill it. Listen, you will always be lost because God is your location that can only fill the voice in your life. And if we teach our children that success without God is cool, we're missing it. We're missing it. Here's my pastor's points. I want to ask you a couple questions. What's your location? When God came to Adam and Eve in the, in, in the cool of the day, he called him. He said, hey, where are you? It wasn't that he didn't know where they were physically. He was saying, what happened to you spiritually? Where are you? Well, pastor, you didn't really say anything to the kids today about what they need to do because in my house, the adults set the tone. Don't no kid run my house. Not now. There will never be one birthed that's going to run my house. Never, ever, ever. So there's nothing for me to really address the kids about. We need to do something that in our lives, in our hearts. And then, you know, we, we, we get mad at the teachers that try to give them discipline. And you go up to the school and you go off. And, the and they see and me talking to my poo-poo like, come on, poo-poo. And that's just what he is, some poo-poo. He acting bad. 
Come on, poo poo. You ain't gotta go. You ain't gotta listen to that lady. Give me another teacher. Did you teach him anything? And I'm not talking about when they're being treated unjustly or and no, I'm not talking about when when you know that, that you know parents, don't we know? You know your I, I remember I remember one time, I remember one time somebody said something about a, 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 a Tina's son, and she said, Yep, that sounds just like him. I know he did it. She, she, she didn't even have to talk to him. As she said, oh, yeah, that's him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's him. That's my son. i never forget that because I was like, that's a parent that's in tune with their child's success. But the first thing we want to do, how you know it was him? Why you bring pointing my child out? It was eight other kids. It don't matter about the other kids. We're talking about your child. So where are you, parent? Love the Lord with all your heart. Well, where are you? Here's number two. Here's number two so I can let you go. Make Jesus a regular conversation. How often do you talk about Jesus with your children? How often do you talk about the things of God? He says, because I want you in verse number six, impress it upon the children. Talk about it when you sit at home and when you're walking along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. And lastly, dedicate your home to God and his presence. So what does that mean? There's certain things you can't listen to in my home. Certain things you can't do in my home. I don't understand. I, I don't, some of you t- parents with teenagers, y'all, y'all I'm, I'm befuddled. I'm, I'm confused. I'm, I don't understand. He's like, he did disrespect my home and he, he, he be smoking weed in the back past. It's like, and he living? He ain't your house. He just go in my room and take stuff. And he not handicapped. Give me three minutes. I feel this in my spirit. I need to empower some single moms. Hey, hey, hey. Let me take the whole context of this now. You don't need a man to raise a man. I know what society want to tell you. Listen to me. You not will it enhance? Will it help? But you don't need one. Because you'll walk around feeling that your son is not going to be everything that he could be because you don't have the duality of parenting. No, 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 no. God has given you everything that you need. However your situation ended up where it is, you don't need a man. Now, will it help? Absolutely. If he is a man, yes, it'll help. But you don't need no man. But what you need to do, what you need to do is parent him. And a man needs authority. I'm teaching you, a man needs authority, a man needs structure, and a man needs accountability. If you are not authoritative with them, with him, he will run all over you. So let me show you how my mama did it. When she said, hey, bring that Nintendo and put it in my closet. That meant get up, unplug the Nintendo, put it in her closet. How dare you raise a boy that you can't get out of a video game because when you tell him he won't move, are you, can you still live it? That you bought, he got a Nintendo, an Xbox, PlayStation, everything, and he won't. No, 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 no. You are empowered. You're gonna do what I. You're gonna do what I say as long as you're in my house. And the day you can't obey by my rules, anybody can come pick you up. It don't matter. But you're gonna do what I say while you're in my house. I'm trying to help. No, no. I'm telling you, Mama. He needs authority. And don't you ever be scared of a boy that gets physically stronger than you. My mama let me know, yeah, you're stronger than me, you can bench press more than me, but I ain't never seen nobody survive a Louisville slug in their sleep. You might win right now, but you better not ever go close your eyes in this house, because the day you put your hands on me is the day we're going to be picking out a suit, drinking some Czech sodas, and singing some slow songs. That's a funeral. I'm trying to impact, but see, you feel, I need a man to speak to him. Baby girl, look at me. No, you don't. You stand in the authority that's in you. You working. You provide. You don't need no man to do that. You do that. And pastor, when I say something, he gets so angry. My mama let me know, son, you can get as angry as you want to. 
but you won't know how to act a fool. You ain't old enough. Some of y'all missed that. You can get as angry as you want to, but you don't know how to act a fool. She's letting me know I'm mild, I'm, mad, I'm meek, I'm your mama, but if you ever get angry with me, I will show you a side of, I'm 42 years old. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. All this, Sheila, Sheila, ain't nothing to drink here. How dare he call you by your first name? How dare you? How dare you? They need accountability. They need authority. You, 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 I, I just want to empower you. You can raise that boy and he'll hate you for it now, but he will love you later. Y'all stand up. Because if we don't start parenting these young men, this world is in a sad place. I'm scared to see what I'm, I'm looking around like I don't see no candidates for my girls because we teaching them not to work we teaching them that everything comes easy they don't have respect for authority how you, you, you let your kids call grown men by the first name and you want to be married with a blended family and you think a man gonna come in there and work hard and a 12 year old call him by his first name let me stop all-star kids. Look at the person beside you and say, I ain't coming back next week. Look at the person beside you and say, I, I'm, I'm definitely not coming back next week. We got some guests that got a flyer. They were like, is this the right address? He looks so nice on the flyer. <laughs> Let's just be honest. It's been some of the toughest conversations that people have had with you in life that actually helped you the most in life once you got over the sting of what they said. There is no passive way to say our children don't have Jesus. There is no passive way to say, Mom, you got to get it together because everything you're telling them not to do, they're seeing you doing it. We can't, you, our children are too intelligent to grow up in a society where we say, well, no, don't do it because I'm an adult, you not. There's no reason for you to be rude or use certain words or do certain things in front of your children and for them to expect that they're not supposed to do it because they're not a certain age. Did I tell y'all I love y'all today? Let's pray. There's a person in here that says, Pastor, I really need the Lord's help in doing a better and more consistent job raising Christian children. Slip your hand in the air. I want to pray for you right where you are. Slip your hand in the air. I'm just not being consistent. I'm not being as consistent as I should. I'm not doing everything that I should. I need to, I need to, I need to do it. Okay, put your hands down. I'm going to ask again. See, because you're looking at sin. I'm talking about your temper. I'm talking about your anger. I'm talking about them getting on the phone, hearing you talking about people, them, them, you, you calling people stupid in traffic, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so those of you that need prayer, please raise your hands. Okay, there we go. There's the church. There's the church. Put your hands down. Father, in Jesus' name, let us all do better. Are we perfect? No. Do we make mistakes? Yes. Do we need you? Absolutely. We want to teach our children to honor you and to live for you. There's somebody in this place, and I talked about it earlier, that you don't have the real God-fearing relationship where you're thriving and growing like you really haven't given your life to Jesus. It can't be in them before it's in you. I know I talk strongly, but man... It's only because I love you whether this is your first time or not. My, my thing that I want to do is introduce you to a real life-giving relationship with Jesus. But, Pastor, I'm not perfect. I didn't ask you if you were perfect. None of us are. But my thing is, if you die today, where do you spend eternity? If you're saying, Pastor Campbell, even though I may not even have children, but I just know I need an authentic relationship with Jesus, will you include me in your prayer? Absolutely, I will. 
I just want to know who I'm praying for with all eyes closed, all heads bowed. I want to embarrass you. I just want to know who I'm praying for. And most importantly, heaven wants to know who's choosing Jesus today. So if that's you on the count of three, I just want you with great boldness and pride. He says, come before my throne. Don't, don't be ashamed. You, you, you come and you get the grace and the mercy in time of need. So this is where we're coming today. We're coming to Jesus. So on the count of three, just slip that hand in the air if you want me to include you in my prayer. One, two, three. Slip that hand in the air. I see you. Whoa, five, seven, eight, nine, 12, 13, 14, 15. Wow. Keep that hand up. The ushers are going to give you something. Faith Center, we can do better than that. Faith Center, we can do better than that. I see teenagers accepting Jesus. The ushers are going to give you something. All right, let's pray. Those of you that raise your hand in Faith Center family, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your love and your life. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Teach me how to live this overcoming life with you. I confess I am changed, I am saved, I am forgiven, I am new.